I'm going to uh, talk about uh, what we call a humble big idea. And we would be uh, me and uh, my collaborator too, who is not here. Uh, we call this idea experimental lab design. Um, and it's humble because it's not about changing the world or about doing great stuff with lab or about understanding the deeper levels of lab. It's, it's uh, about developing labs with an open and experimental mindset. But it's still a big idea because it has changed the way that we look at designing labs. So we come from a place where you start from scratch and then you develop and develop and develop. But at some point you have uh, a big event, the lab, and then you have some aftermath. And then when you want to make a new lab, you start from scratch and you develop and develop and develop and you have this big, big event and then you have the aftermath and you can go on. So what we're doing is that we have sort of an iterative approach where we have small things that we work on and they circle into a little bit bigger things and a little bit bigger things and then they circle maybe back down a little bit and we always use what we have learned previously um, to design the next thing we're doing. So what I'm going to do, uh, do, to, to, to do now is I'm going to show you the basic mechanism. I'm going to tell you how we use it to test ideas. Uh, I will argue that there are uh, certain benefits of uh, doing lab design in this way. And I'll show you some examples of uh, how we have combined tango dancing with live action role playing. So let's get started. So this is the basic me mechanism. Um, you have some sort of idea. And you have to formulate that idea. That means that you have to prepare some meaningful activities. These activities will allow your pa test participants to do some testing. And you watch them, and you talk to them, and you discuss with them. Then you draw the consequences. Some of the stuff that you have done will have worked, and some of it will not have worked. You will have succeeded at some things, and you will have failed at other things. If it works, use it. If it didn't work, try again and reiterate, and reiterate, and reiterate. And so, our basic premise is that every lab that you can think of has, has at least one big idea. And these ideas can be dissected into smaller ideas that support the big idea. And even these smaller ideas can be dissected to smaller ideas which support their own, uh, which goes to support ideas. Now, the idea of a testable idea is that um, it's something that will allow your participants to do something very specific which uh, you can observe and then discuss with them so you'll know what they have done. So one example big idea that we had when we designed our tango lab is that we can teach people enough tango to tell stories in tango lab. That's one of the ideas we had. For us this idea was a little bit too big so we had to dissect it a little bit. One of the smaller ideas that we came up with was that, okay, we can teach them a set of tango moves that can be used in tango labs. And so what this does is that if you then change that just a little bit by adding one move or subtracting one move, then you affect um, what people or what your participants are able to do because it adds or reduces to the possibilities they have in dancing. And it will, it will probably also uh, change how they feel when they dance. And so if everybody in the lab is doing all this, then you have a lot of accumulated effects that add up to a different feeling altogether in the lab. And so small things can change things on a bigger scale, which is uh, an example of complexity thinking, if you want that. So, and what I've written here is that testing may change the very nature of what you're doing, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about this. Now, what we do in order to, to keep track of what it is we're testing is we do incremental changes. We keep most of the things we're doing constant, and then we take one little bit and then change that and see what that does. The medium we use is uh, workshops, so we call them, uh, we can call them pre-lab workshops, but uh, really just workshop will do. Um, this is the lab. This is where we try out, we have participants try out what, uh, our ideas and play with them. And this is where we develop knowledge. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wear 
the benefit part. Because I think one of the most beneficial things that has come out of this, for me at least, is that we have developed usable knowledge. That is, we practice working with our ideas, we re always reflect about what we're doing because we talk to people about what it is that we're doing. And then we, do, we look for new ways to apply this knowledge, even when we are doing it. We also get something else. We get a distributed knowledge base, meaning that every single one of the participants we had, have, they have experimented with our idea, and they have uh, encountered things that we did not imagine them to encounter. They have discovered unique things that only they know. And uh, actually, I, uh, as I made this presentation, I came to think that actually these ideas are all around the world now, which is pretty cool from my perspective. Um, so they have all these ideas, and the only way we can access them is that, again, if we talk to people. And when we do that, we get comments, good comments, bad comments. We can observe what people do. And sometimes we, we actually realize that we have failed. We have done something which did not succeed. And this is where we develop the vision, by making the changes that, uh, uh, get, that puts us forward. A, these are uh, three of the benefits that I have uh, come to think of. I, I got to think about an, uh, a fourth one, which is that word gets around. Um, I'm not an advertiser, so I have nothing clever to say about advertising, and I will just move on. To the case, which is tango role-playing. Play, and um, I'll give you some of the things that we have tested. Um, the big idea here is... Da -da -da. It is possible to use tango as a medium for telling stories in laughs. And this was too big an idea for us to, to, to start out with, so we had to develop, uh, we had to dissect it a little bit. So what we did is, um, when you dance, you can have a focus. Uh, and we use focus as a means for communication. So when you look at the picture, you will see uh, a couple staring at each other very intensely. It's, this is from one of uh, the iterations of, of our game. Their focus is on each other and only on each other for that, in that particular moment, in that particular dance. Her focus could have been on herself. It could have been directed inwards. It could have been directed at a special person out there uh, or on a set of people. And likewise, his attention could have done the same thing. And the shifts in attention that they have during a dance, this is where they communicate, this is where they react to each other, and this is where they can actually lop. Shifting attention. This is one of the tools we have. We have other tools, which I will not tell you about. This tool seems to work pretty well, although I'm pretty sure that neither Tu nor I know anything about why it's working. Well, we know something, but we don't have the whole story because of the distributed knowledge base. So, when we do this tango lap, um, most people that start attending do not know how to dance tango. And so we need to teach people how to tangle lap. Even if they were tango dancers, they might not know how to lap. So we need people to know how to tangle lap. In a sense, they need to learn to play the game. Now, these two uh, 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 columns here represent the old way and the new way of doing uh, 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 workshop activities, which allows people to play our, our game. So we started out with a presentation of, of, uh, of, of a game, a lengthy presentation. And then we moved on to a tango lesson where we learned the basics, and then we went on to playing with tango in this role-playing fashion. The problem for us was that this didn't really do it for us. It didn't add enough to the participant abilities. So we changed it around a bit, and this is also a result of our testing, that we changed it around so that instead of, of starting with the presentation of the game, we start with what it's all about, namely tango. And we do that in a little bit more uh, playful manner than we did before. And then um, we go on to play with tango, and we also use tango to create uh, uh, characters. So if you are supposed to play, or if you want to play a schizophrenic, you will have to figure out how you do that playing, uh, doing, uh, while dancing tango, express that uh, uh, while dancing tango. So what, we, what, we, what, we, what was necessary here was that we wanted to move, move the workshop activities around. That was what uh, our outset was in this particular case. But it ended up with, not only did we move things around, we had to change the activities themselves. 
Um, and this is an example of how when you test, well, you, you, you change what you're doing. You change the vision, you change everything, basically, when you, change, when you, when you test. The presentation nuggets that we had before are, are still inherent in the, in the activities we have. They've just been placed other, uh, uh, broken up and placed uh, other places. And again, this seems to work, so I'll go now to something that did not work. Um, having winning criteria for dance. This is an early iteration of, uh, of our game. Uh, it's from another Knudelpunkt, 2010, so 2010 is early in this timeline. Um, you might be able to make out that there are some rules here which people should enact. One of the rules was that, imagine that we have some players. One is called uh, Joe and another one is called Jane. Now, Joe wants Jane to give poison to Jack. Jane, on the other hand, wants Joe to go on a date with Jill. So they meet and they uh, declare what they're going to do. Then they dance and they, go, and they negotiate their wishes through the dance. After the dance, and this is the idea, after the dance, um, they decide was this a dance good enough for us to agree on uh, poisoning slash dating. When we talked to people about this afterwards, um, they had very big problems because they couldn't decide what was good enough. When were they supposed to say, okay, this worked and, and not worked? And we, have, we couldn't come up with any good answers for that. So we had to abandon the idea in the end, or, well, for now at least. Um, but we haven't abandoned the idea totally. We are testing different approaches to negotiating the outcome of a dance. And the very cool thing about this approach is that we know that we might never get it right. We might never get it to work. Um, but what we do know is that we will learn a lot from trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing again. And I think that this is really the beautiful thing about this and what I wanted to share with you that every time we set up a tangle lab, we view it as an experiment. And uh, with those words, uh, thank you for your attention.